Howdy folks, Jabberiki here, and I've just been to see Illumination's newest animated feature, Sing, which has only just been released in UK cinemas. Sing is about a koala called Buster Moon, who owns his own theatre called Moon Theatre, but his theatre is falling apart and all his productions are complete flops. So he decides to start a singing competition. This inspires everyday average people to embrace their singing talents and audition for Buster. But even after Buster selects these winners, it's not going to be an easy production because he's pretty much broke, so he has to improvise with what limitations he has. Now, I'm going to admit that this film is not remarkable or impressive. Far from it. It's not exactly original. It doesn't really give any twists or turns to the usual formula used for films about stage, theatre or singing competitions. It tends to follow the cliches and tropes of these kinds of movies beat for beat and isn't really interested in going outside the box. To be honest, it felt so familiar. It really reminded me of Nativity. Eerily like Nativity, to be honest. <laughs> Plus, the film doesn't really give that much attention to the singing aspect of its story. It is a big part of it, but most of the movie is more focused on comedic hijinks and misunderstandings. But, when the film is about singing, it is superb. It is solid. Seriously. What I love about this film's approach to singing is showing that these everyday people really do love to sing and want to embrace their gifts and show it to the world, but they're also aware of their limitations, whether they're shy, they've got full-time jobs, or they've got commitments. That's one of the major things that I respected about this film. It was willing to address the fact that following your dreams isn't an easy task, it's not going to fall on your lap, there's going to be problems, there's going to be obstacles, and you're going to have to make sacrifices. And seeing these characters work around their restraints, trying to fit this competition into their lives in some way, is just incredibly inspiring and uplifting. However, I will admit that sometimes the characters go too far, especially Buster Moon. He does kind of go into the area where you feel as if that this is definitely illegal. And it does bug me how sometimes the film frames authority figures stopping Buster from doing these pretty much illegal things as killjoys of music. Buster, no. <laughs> That's clearly wrong. I know you love singing, I know this cast you have is really talented, but no. I have to side with those because, yeah, in, the, in, in terms of the law, you're in the wrong. <laughs> Speaking of Buster, I like that they do flesh him out. He's not your usual conventional theatre manager character who's just sitting in the chairs chomping a cigar and going, Next! There's more to him. He's really passionate, just like the singers. He's really into theatre and he's in love with the craft and he sees talent and he knows how to encourage it. So what about the songs, the biggest selling point of this film? I will admit, when I saw the trailer for this film, I was thinking, really, is that all this movie's going to be? A bunch of talking animated animals doing covers of popular songs that everyone recognises? Is that it? Is that the one joke? Is that the gist of the film? But, to be honest, it's actually a very small portion of the movie. It's only in the audition scene where the film starts to have this big montage of different animals doing covers of popular songs. I was afraid it was going to be the whole movie, but luckily it's not. It's, it's a very tiny part of the film, and I like that. And the thing is, the cover songs in this movie are really good, but what I love about them is that because we've become so attached to these characters, there's so much weight and depth to the performances and you can really feel them because they have meaning behind them because we've grown to love these characters and we want them to show the world that they're very talented and we want them to break their mold and like get out there and show how wonderful they are. When the characters finally get together and go on stage to perform, it's really satisfying because this is what the movie has been building up to. This is what we've wanted for the characters. We want them to become superstars. We wanted them to get recognition for their talents. And I will admit, I kind of teared up a little bit. I think there's only one character I didn't really care about and his song performance didn't really hit me emotionally and that has to be Seth MacFarlane's character, Mike. And yes, Seth is 
really good in the role, and I do believe that Seth should be cast in way more animated productions because he's such a versatile and talented voice actor. But the character of Mike, who's this little mouse who sings jazz, he's an asshole. I get what they're trying to do. They, the joke is that he's a tiny little mouse, but he's got a bit of an attitude and he carries his weight around despite having uh, a very small stature. I get that, but that doesn't hold up throughout an entire film, and he just becomes a very insufferable character. When it, whenever he gets his big moment on stage, whenever he um, triumphs, I didn't feel anything. Because there's just nothing at all that's redeeming about him. He is the worst character in the film, and he's just... he's horrible! He's spiteful to all the other characters, he's got... his ego is just over the mountain, and yeah, I just didn't like him. To conclude, while Sing isn't anything special, it's still got enough heart and personality to win many audiences over. I did really like it, and I would watch it again. I've been Jamboreek, and I hope you enjoyed this vlog review of Sing. Feel free to support me on my Patreon. Cheerio, folks.